Hi everyone, I'm just gonna wait to see that the picture appears on my uh, on my other screen and then we can get started. I'm just uh, going to, I mean, YouTube is telling me that I'm live. I'm still not seeing any any comments, but I'm just going to, going to see. Okay, now we are, now we're talking. I'm hoping everybody's hearing me. And I'm I'm gonna get comfortable and all that stuff. So it's Sunday evening, yay! <laughs> Just before the beginning of a new week, where everybody is probably going to be working from home and so on. So I thought I would um, give myself something uh, to get me through the week, and I wanted to do another piece. Uh, and this is one of my series for Christmas, and. <laughs> I I don't know why, but I just can't stop drawing sweets. Does that make sense? I feel like I want to eat sweets all the time. I do not know. Oh, hello, Florine. Hello, Marlena. Hello, Melo. <laughs> so I draw lots of sweets, probably because I want to eat a lot of sweets. I actually did cook this weekend uh, scones. So, yeah. So I decided, you know what, well, it's Christmas, so let's make it a series. Let's make it a Christmas series <laughs> uh, with sweets for Christmas, right? So, yeah, let's get started. And what was I drawing? It's so weird. It's like I had this dream of uh, a tart, like with custard inside and blueberries everywhere. And then, like, uh, some sort of mascarpone at cheese uh, topping uh, made like super sweet and then a little bit tinted because you're gonna put like cherries or anything else in there um, so like it's I'm gonna have a uh, lots of cream on top and it's gonna taste amazing I've never done this in my life this sweet but I'm just assuming it's going to taste okay so we're gonna get started I'm using my micron pen which is a 03 number so I'm just gonna draw um, the first part and then we're gonna start coloring and then we're gonna draw the other parts, okay? So it actually has a cherry on top. Okay, it's winter. I'm not sure how many cherries we can we can actually get our hands on, but I'm gonna see. So This is Archie's watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton and it's called Press. And it has a lot more tooth than normal watercolor paper as well. It's called Press, but other cold press paper are more fine. This particular one has a lot more um, tooth to it. And what I'm thinking now is that... The zero three doesn't work on this paper. We need to go to zero zero five, <laughs> otherwise we won't be able to see anything. Okay, so now the way I do the cream is just gonna be layers upon layers upon layers of goodness here. Like think caloric bomb. Why not? I wonder how many calories this cream is going to have. That's going to be so nice. Like, no wonder, Claudia, you gain five kilos after each Christmas. <clears throat> yeah. But lucky for you, I'm drawing this and you get to watch and then you don't have to eat it, right? Because it's just like my drawing. So there you go. Right? Just like if it's a drawing, we can still dream about it. We don't have to necessarily go and eat everything. <laughs> okay, so for tonight's uh, topic, I wanted to talk about 
Christmas traditions and especially in the countries that I've been going to and also the first Christmas I had in the Netherlands which was an interesting Christmas uh, so I am not sure if this type of Christmas is only be only for my Dutch family or maybe other Dutch families also have the same type of Christmas here but I was let's say I was used to a different Christmas so when I moved I actually had my wedding on the 1st of December so it was winter so and then I was living with my husband and my mother-in-law uh, in her house we were well, young and restless and trying to uh, save some money. Um, so that's why we weren't renting. We actually wanted to save money so that we can get a place of our own. So the deal was that we would do all the food uh, for the house. And then we didn't have to pay uh, rent and all that stuff. So theoretically we could... You know put the rent money aside and this is how we were able to actually move out which is nice um, so i'm used to you know making my christmas tree immediately after the 6th of december you go out you buy a christmas tree like big one you you know make it all pretty, put candy. I would have already had my presents by that time, right? And then I get the shock of my life, first of all. My husband, family, well, my mother-in-law and my husband, they weren't really that big on Christmas. And by that, I mean, there were no Christmas decorations in the house. They don't usually make Christmas trees. That was like something not really heard of. So that was the first hurdle. Like, okay, what do we do? Of course, we were just newlywed, trying to get, uh, get money and save money. So I say to my mother-in-law, like, hey, but I'm used to having a Christmas tree and, you know, celebrating Christmas and and all of that stuff. So how can we how can we make this one? So in true Dutch fashion, she's like, yeah, we're going to go to the second hand shop and we're going to buy some Christmas decoration. And I was like already... I'm not used to secondhand shops, not even now. So I was like, ah, there's gonna be decorations that other people have touched and and so on. But in the end, you know, I can see the appeal because well, it's very cheap. So we went to secondhand shops, we we chose some decorations that I thought were really nice. We had to wash them a little bit because well they were smelling like they've been in the attic for quite a while um but they were really nice so we bought um you know the glittery thing is that you put all around um and i think the only thing that we bought from the real shop was a set of lights because yeah lights were not really in the second hand shop mostly just christmas decorations were there so so we bought the lights and then we went to the supermarket which is very interesting because i usually would would have went to buy a christmas tree from anywhere else we went to the supermarket and had these really cheap trees but not not with the big needles but with smaller needles we bought that one and it was like super short and i was like it doesn't matter it's a tree i'm just gonna put it there so you know at least christmas tree achieved <laughs> and decorations and now comes the funny part i was like okay now we're gonna have to go and buy um christmas presents and then they were like 
well, but you, you get, you don't get presents on Christmas. And I was like, what? Like, but when do you get presents? Presents? And they're like, well, you get it on, um, Santa Claus. And I was like, what's this Santa Claus? Isn't it like Santa Claus? Is, isn't it like the Dutch word of Santa Claus? But like, no, no, no. Santa Claus comes on the 5th of December with a boat from Spain and it brings presents to kids. And that's when you get the presents. But not on Christmas. I'm, I was like, it's a bit strange because it has the same name, right? So they were like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing really uh, presents for Christmas. Weird. Uh, I still persisted. I was like, no, 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 we, we're going to have presents. And in true Romanian fashion, the presents everybody, you know, like my mother-in-law got and so on. Like, you usually get things like socks and... Uh, blouses and things like soap for the hair and creams and you know fancy stuff <laughs> so this is what i usually buy so now comes the christmas day right for me christmas day would have been like super celebratory there's gonna be a like super big christmas lunch um everything like big dinner big everything right so i asked them like hey what are we gonna do for the christmas lunch and for the christmas dinner and you know are we gonna go out are we gonna eat very good the answer is but christmas is just like any other day so we don't do anything special <laughs> that was like what again uh very strange for me so in the end uh what we ended up doing is a sort of indoor barbecue which turned out to be something that we've been doing every year since then um and where we bought a bunch of meats a bunch of other other um uh, veggies we chopped them off and we just sit on the table with a with a, a electric grid grill in the middle and we just eat so yeah that was that was my first christmas in the netherlands and then i realized that um the dutch are pretty i don't want to say pragmatic about stuff but you know they don't necessarily want to look frivolous or pay money or spend too much money and they also don't want to make any lavish parties this is what i learned from the dutch they are not like that is seen by them as showing off if you would have a very big party like that it would be like i show off that i have money and other people uh don't so they just don't do that um another year that i been and this time it was with a cousin of my husband who was uh, living in france so he's living in france his, his wife is french so they invited us because they were coming to their parents with the kids and everything and they invited us to have christmas with them and i was thinking already i was a bit suspicious because well Dutch Christmas doesn't sound like something, but it turned out that because the wife was French, um, they had more of a, like the French Christmas. And that was a totally different experience because uh, this lady, she was cooking and she had even printed out all the menus for the entire day, which was super cool. Um, and on the menus um uh, there were like 12 courses so totally french we even had foie gras which is like a sort of duck liver pate thingy uh one of them it had soup and 10 million things that you might not even know existed like really awesome french cuisine and desserts and wine and everything so that was another type of christmas that i've experienced which i really liked and 
it it is a bit more in line with the Christmas back home that I had. So yeah, this this was another one. And now let's take about let's talk about my sort of type of Christmas that I like. And this was a Christmas that we did, uh, I believe, last year. Uh, it was here in the Netherlands, but I invited all my Romanian friends, and they all came. And in true Romanian fashion, what we usually do is everybody brings lots of food. Although I say I'm the host and I already produce lots of food, everybody brings food because and wine and everything. So we have a mountain of food. Think about like lots of food, like a lot. And what we usually start is we start making all the food. And there is a, uh, like everybody knows that Christmas is going to be hard. Everybody know that knows that we're going to eat a lot. So what they do is you don't eat breakfast, you don't eat lunch. So you come a little bit after lunch. So you're like super empty so that you can eat a lot. And the funniest part is we were all cooking. So we were like 10, 11 people. Uh, everybody was cooking something. Everybody was frying something. So we did all the food. Like in two hours, we like fried everything, did everything. And we had it all laid out on the table. After these two hours, everybody was super hungry. Like at one moment, people were like, okay, should we stop cooking and actually <laughs> uh, eat something? So that was kind of a cue for us to go like, okay, now it's time to eat. It's time to, you know, have some fun. But we were so famished that for the first I want to say half an hour, all you can hear. So we were not talking, we were not doing anything. All you could hear was the sound of eating. So everybody was just eating. And then after about half an hour, we were all looking at each other and we're like, okay, now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Uh, everything is okay. Feeling not hungry anymore eating about half of the food, right? <laughs> and that's when the fun starts. And the fun is not necessarily what you think, like dancing or anything. It's just, you know, chit-chatting and talking and then maybe playing some games, some board games or, you know, anything fun. And then uh, you go and you uh, eat intermittently right like you play some games you do some stuff then you eat some more then you play some more games and then you eat some more stuff so it's always always like a, a go-to and after that day we ate and the funny part is because everybody brought food we actually had so much food left over that me and my husband were able to eat for almost the entire entire week without actually having to buy anything um and the funny part was was already cooked so we had it in our fridge and then like every day what are we gonna eat oh some leftover from christmas yes <laughs> up until new year right so yeah this was uh some some cool cool things that make me remember Christmas is back at home. Well, my other home. <laughs> With my mom and uh, my grandma, grandpa, sometimes. So, I don't know how your Christmases are in the country where you are, wherever you're watching. But I'm assuming it's a combination of, of all. And I'm really hoping not a lot of people are like the Dutch, super worried that they might, they might go overboard. <laughs> um, I am painting these blueberries and they're 
going to look really awesome and it's going to be blue and the uh, blue I have is the Psalo blue and the other one is Schmink and Violet which is a really nice Schmink and Violet okay Okay, I think this one has dried out. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna add a bit more depth of color. The problem with the watercolors is that they always dry out quite. lighter than normal so i was hoping everybody has watched also the news with the black friday that was interesting i was staying at home i actually managed to not buy anything on black friday this this year and the funny part is that i i don't know how i managed that actually but I wanted to buy so many things. I wanted to buy some more Arches watercolor paper. And there was no um, discounts online. Like I, I looked at Amazon. I looked uh, almost everywhere. But I still wanted to buy. I don't know. The uh, impulse to buy was super strong. So I really wanted to buy something. And then what I was going is I was putting stuff in my basket. I was like, I'm going to buy. And then uh, I I had the great idea to go and count how many uh, Arches watercolor paper pads I have in my stash. And I think I had like five very big ones and a couple of small ones. And then I was like... Why exactly am I buying more watercolor paper? Because I don't have only arches. I have so bit, so much other watercolor paper. Uh, okay, so that went off the window. No more uh, watercolor paper. <laughs> um, and then I decided, uh, well, I'm not going to buy arches. Uh, I'm going to buy myself some uh, watercolor colors. Like, uh, there's new color combinations and I had this shop in mind it's from the UK it's called choosing keeping and they have these really nice Japanese colors that are really pastelish pastel pastel colors yeah and I was like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna buy those ones I realized that any of those colors I can mix myself because I have so many watercolors. It's like, okay, I'm not going to spend 60 euros for a bunch of watercolors that either way I can make myself. Then, in true Claudia fashion, I was still looking on the internet because this is what I do on Black Friday. And then I see this set of Daniel Smith colors like really nice um, and it was a nine color set was like nine, 90 euros or something uh, nine of the five milliliter ones really nice colors really nice pinks really nice green everything nice I was like this is exactly my type of colors what I like and so on then I read the colors that they are and I was like okay now it makes sense why I like them because it turns out um, all those colors I already have because, well, I liked them before and I bought them separate, so... <laughs> Again, no, I didn't buy. And then the clock was ticking, like, three hours left till till Black Friday's over, three and four hours left, and so on and so forth. And then, in the end, I just couldn't decide on anything because I realized I have so much. I have so much. Uh, produce uh, produce it's weird to say produce but I have so many watercolors and so many art supplies that it's very hard for me to say that I 
I need anything else for now. Which which might upset some people that are expecting me to me to do some unboxings or anything because I don't foresee me doing that anytime soon since I'm not buying anything. I was like, maybe I should finish some stuff. Maybe I should actually see if I can utilize my watercolor paper. Like I was making a plan, even if I would, even if I would draw a big piece every day. Uh, it will still take me about maybe six months till I actually need paper. Uh, so, yeah, that's Black Friday for you. I'm just going to add color. So, to be honest, I think I'm starting to see so far what is my favorite color watercolor paper and they're very close to each other however very different and I think I prefer the Hanemule Hanemule Cezanne 300 GSM with I mean, this is very good watercolor paper. This is fantastic watercolor paper. Don't don't get me wrong, but having tried many watercolors that uh, many watercolor papers from many brands, so I tried Sennelier, I tried Saunders, Waterford, I tried Arches, all of them, Fabriano, all of them, and Hanmule. And the one that I mostly like is that one. Um, it's also quite expensive, so you know we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think about it. But well, it's in the same expensiveness as, uh, to be honest, arches is. So it's not like it's much more expensive or anything. So let's not get that ourselves but I have a big pad of Hanamula so I said to myself that until I actually finish that one and let me let me explain what I mean like not for everything that one is the best um but if you're doing like me florals that one is because uh it blends the colors uh, really beautifully especially when you have to leave them transparent and they don't bleed into each other and with arches it's very good watercolor but I think it's for more intense watercolors um, like the type of watercolors that you do um, when do you like when I I would make a very big illustration with humans in it and buildings and so on because that's when you have to get the depth of color uh, very strong and that's when you have to um, add many many layers to create that depth um, so I would say that for the purpose of florals the Hanumulem Cezanne is the perfect one and for the pur purpose of having really nice um, blended flowers, then I would say, yeah, it, it really depends on the purpose. So um, I've been watching lots of videos lately and lots of people were going about and saying um this watercolor paper is the best and this watercolor paper is the best and i'm always very curious how they like they reach the conclusions because every watercolor paper that is the 100 percent cotton is very good like even the i have a bunch of etcher lab um like big once and a bunch of um, Paul Rubens notebooks, also 100% bit thinner paper, but wonderful paper, right? So the question is, 
what is it like where would it make a difference because they're all very expensive papers they're all very expensive um they're all very good papers so the question is does it matter which one of them would you take and i would say it really depends what are you drawing and that's where you need to try out so the way i try out is i don't buy the big ones because that can be very expensive so i buy the tiny ones like the the ones that are more like postcard sized and fabriano has well all of them have them and this is how i try them out and i try different things on them and then i kind of make an impression like where would i best use which uh which one um let me see, adding more here, that is if you want to know about watercolor paper. Like I initially, when I first started, I was drawing with the Moleskine um, notebook and it's a watercolor one. But I struggled so much that I almost gave up watercolors, to be honest. Because I couldn't do any of the wet in wet techniques on it. It would be just terrible. Lines unsharp, everything unsharp. Really annoying. So, yeah, that, that part wasn't. So, this one is going to be a really nice light pink. And I'm going to use the... Opera or the permanent magenta. Let's see. Permanent magenta. Permanent magenta is very interesting one. So, and then I kept trying to buy book uh, watercolor notebooks. So I bought Stratmore and I bought actually from Hanamule one. That was even worse than a moleskin, to be honest. It was like all this cellulose paper. And then I had, for a while, I was using the cancel, Canson, the cellulose. And the Cancel, truth to be told, um, it works very well when you're using markers. Uh, I need both the titanium. So if you're using markers like the Tim Holtz markers or... Um, that works really nice, actually. That, that's... Um, working perfect um however if you want to put more than two layers on on the paper good luck uh it has it the paper just ruptured so then i started researching because i was a little bit like okay i don't understand this like all these people are doing all these amazing techniques and they're managing to do like wonderful, wonderful things. And I just can't, I, I don't understand where am I going wrong. So I watched lots of YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube is wonderful for this type of stuff and research. And then I realized that there's such a thing as uh, cotton, 100% uh, cotton. And I was like, no, you can't make that much of a difference, right? And by that time, by the way, I had really good watercolors. I spent a fortune on them. Um, and I was like, I spent so much money on these watercolors. And it's a shame that I can't make what I have in my mind. I can't make the, the ideas in my mind. And then I bought... Um, the, my, by my art shop, which is the Swak. I used to live in Utrecht by that time. So if you guys don't know the Netherlands, the Netherlands has these big cities. Uh, there, um, it's like a metropolitan area around Amsterdam. And there's these big cities like, um, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Den Haag and Utrecht. And Utrecht is a very old city, really beautiful. And I used to live there. Uh, before I actually bought my uh, my home, uh, it's a pretty much uh, a, a really nice old city, but also student student city. So um, lots of young people 
lots of life and yeah okay when i got a bit older i it wasn't really for me anymore but in utrecht by my art shop where also all the students were buying they had this um we call it unbeating rope you know um can't find the, the english words but um where everything is like 50 percent off or stuff like that and they had the oh, arches pad which was 12 12 sheets uh the cold press and they had it on unbidding and you know i was like okay i'm gonna buy this one uh worst case scenario i'm i wasn't paying all that much because it wasn't like a a limed one it was the unlimed one so that's usually cheaper so i think i ended up paying 15 euros or something like that so i bought that one and i started doing some pieces and i wasn't expecting to see much i wasn't expecting to see much uh difference i was expecting that it was purely just my skill just my watercolor skill that was really bad and this is what i i was thinking and then i started making some pieces and some flowers and some things that uh even with negative painting and all that stuff and i was amazed how easy it was i never managed to do the negative painting on any of those cheapo notebooks like moleskin and so on not that was looking nice i mean um don't get me wrong there are people on youtube that are doing that and they're doing on the moleskin stuff but it's a trick why am i saying it's a trick if you look at all of those they're filming from from above so when you're filming from above that's why I'm, i always like to film from close by uh, any piece looks looks very awesome from above and from far away to be honest um so i got tricked by these people doing these pieces on like oh cheap art supplies and all sorts of random videos and i was getting tricked by that because i was thinking always it's my skill or my problem i don't get that and actually it was the paper and i never looked back i never touched the mold skin ones i still have them in the back there what turns out is it's okay i didn't throw them away because hey let's put it this way i did pay quite some money for them right but uh what is nice is that you can use them very well for gouache it's like i know totally unrelated not like watercolor but you can use them for gouache because gouache is a different medium a little bit and um it just sits on top of the paper it doesn't sip into the paper so you know then all of this one works much better and this one is gonna be brownish okay and you know i i still keep it and i'm gonna use them for gouache but since i discovered that particular let's say you know aha moment where it's like okay so then i tried also like really cheap watercolors um uh, this is like the crust of the pie really cheap watercolors uh that's even worse on this uh uh, cellulose watercolor paper but cheap watercolors work perfectly fine and by cheap i mean like the koi or even the prank work fine on like 100 percent cotton and i think then if you were to experience something i would say experience the you want to learn watercolors and you want to learn techniques and all sorts of stuff i would say invest in a paper first get to know your colors get to know your mixing because you can do a lot with mixing and everything and then think about buying watercolors uh, at least if i were to redo anything is i would do that because i really i went all out on 
paying lots of money on watercolors and you know for me if at that moment it was okay i mean have a good job uh it was my only hobby so you know fine but i can see why for other people you know it might be an expensive thing to pick up but then if you're only paying for the paper then you're gonna be okay you know um i still need to think about what color i'm doing the bowl if anybody wants to give me any uh ideas about the colors of the bowl uh let me know <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do the other poinsettia here and some leaves and then I'm going to go back to the bowl one once stuff is being dried out. So yeah, if you, if any of you have any ideas, let me know. And now I'm hoping that things have dried out. Yeah, things have dried out. Okay. So... Yeah. Christmas in other countries. Oh yeah, I forgot about the German Christmas. <laughs> uh German Christmas. Wow, that's um it can be summarized in the Christmas markets in Germany that everybody goes to from the Netherlands, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you heard about it, I don't know if you ever visit them, but uh, whenever people say, I'm going to take some holiday for Christmas and I'm go they're going to ask, so where are you going? It's like, I'm going to go across the border in Germany for the Christmas markets. Um, wonderful Christmas markets, like lots of lights, lots of like beer and food and sausages and everything you want basically can be found there. And people go there to experience the atmosphere to experience the christmas carols to experience everything and to buy really cool stuff so you can basically buy anything you want from there uh and yeah it's really cool of course now with i'm just assuming with with the whole situation uh not a lot of people are gonna go there but you never know what's going on maybe but you can find a lot of dutch people there um, i heard that there's also a christmas market in amsterdam i never been to so i cannot attest for it i cannot say yeah sure you should go to amsterdam for a christmas market i know that there is one However, the good part, I heard only about the German markets where you can buy like apple, apple strudel and um, all sorts of sweets and goodies, man. Goodies. Okay. Um... Christmas markets. I wonder which countries have more Christmas markets like this. Hmm. Maybe England. Maybe England would have Christmas markets, yeah. Most probably they do, right? They're very big. Can you imagine? All sorts of pastries and stuff. I mean, they are famous for their pastries and stuff. So, I would assume that that's what they're going with. Uh, 
Christmas. I always wanted to sing Christmas carols. <laughs> and I'm terrible at singing. So I remember one time we used to have this with the with the class um in school. We used to go to like old folks home and uh, bring them presents and fruits and stuff and we used to sing. Uh, because you know in the country where I'm coming from the old folks ho homes is where you go when you don't have anybody um, so you know we used to we used to go there with the, the entire class and with our homeroom teacher and we used to sing Christmas carols and I remember vividly that I was trying to sing along right I mean I'm not very good and I was hoping, okay, probably nobody will notice anyway. And I had this uh, this guy in my class. His name was Daniel. Daniel, if you're watching, sorry, I have to say this. <laughs> and he always told you the truth in your face. He had this thing where he couldn't lie or he couldn't pretend. So he turns, he was next to me. And I was like, sing along, da 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 da, Christmas carols. I was thinking, well, it's okay, there's so many kids here, nobody's going to hear my babbling. And he turns to me and he says, Claudia, can you please stop singing? It's really making me like wanna run away, <laughs> jump. Uh, she's like, you're singing so bad that it's like really hurting my ears. Can you please stop singing? I was like, but I want to sing the Christmas carols for these guys. And he's like, like, we're supposed to bring joy to these guys at the, uh, at the asylum. And you're just making them want to run away and scream. I was like, really? Is that really that bad? Apparently it was that bad. It was really that bad at singing. So uh, don't ask me to sing. Not a very good idea. So, yeah. <laughs> the one tradition I like in the Netherlands uh, is the tradition with the olibolen. And the olibolen are like the best donuts in the world. And the tradition is that they sell it during Christmas time and New Year's, especially for New Year's. So I particularly cannot wait to get my hands on quite a few of them. I will have a awesome small Christmas holiday. So... I will uh I will be enjoying enjoying me some um really cool Christmasy. Okay, let's let's try this again. Same color. Uh unfortunately the best one that you can buy is in Amsterdam. And I'll have to travel, but for the best olive oil in the world, I will travel, even in Corona times, to Amsterdam to buy it. The fun part is that you can order it and then you can just pick it up there. So before Christmas, I'm going to go there and just pick it up. So it's going to be an in and out kind of thing. Uh, hopefully... I will not meet anybody. <laughs> Usually the trains are pretty empty, so I will take the train. And yeah, it's gonna be pretty fun, I would say. And because it's vacation and it will be the only time I'm allowed to eat cookies because otherwise yeah, I, I usually don't stop. So unfortunately for me cookies are only when I'm on holiday. So I ensure that that only happens 
two times a year or so when I have my holidays and not like every day. I don't know if you have that problem, but I definitely have it. I definitely cannot just say no to things. And so as long as I don't have them in my home and I don't buy them, which I can do. Uh, but once I have cookies in my home, that's it. That's the end. That is the end. Because I can never say no to things. <laughs> Cookies. Cookies, the bane of our existence. English and Asian bread, I wonder. I wonder if we can do some mega worker to lighten some stuff up. They did the crust a bit too dark. Add some more yellow. Yeah, that's better. Okay, nobody nobody said anything, nobody gave me any ideas about colors and what colors I should use for that particular one. Let's see. And carmine. For the bowl, man. For the bowl. What should the bowl be? Yeah, mellow. <laughs> okay, should it be black and white? <laughs> Maybe we should just try a nice yellow. I think we have enough reds. And some nice yellow would be nice to have. So I'm bringing in more dark red here. You might wonder what's this dark red all about, and it's called Permanent Alizarin Crimson from Windsor and Newton, if you were wondering the color. I like purple. You like purple. Okay. Purple it is then, Florin. Florin has spoken. Purple it is. It will be nice actually. Purple is actually a good color because it will bring about the purple from inside these ones that I'm going to have to go around. Okay. Purple, purple, purple. Now the question is, which type of purple should we do? Dead, dead. I added more water. I'm gonna deepen it afterwards. Looks quite nice. 
Huh. Adina also likes yellow. Okay. Gonna maybe do a combination. I'm gonna do some sparkly yellow on these lines here. It's gonna be fun. Okay. So I need to add more concentrated colors. Oh, 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 that's way too much concentrated. It's like not that much, Claudia, not that much. Yes. These will be shadows. And this part needs to be looking. Okay, let's take some more color, add it here. Yep. It's the bo battle of the colors, right? <laughs> Yellow and purple. I never had a bowl in the oven that was purple, to be honest. Not that it matters, <laughs> for whatever reason. But I never had a bowl that was purple. Uh, I'm gonna add some more shadows here. Maybe they should do some more bold color for bowls in the oven. Some really bold colors or something. That would be cool. Cooking, cooking, cooking utensils are usually either red or very weird like neutral colors but they should make more like purples and yellows and fun colors because why not This is nice. Okay. I'm watching from the sides on my paint uh, painting to see whether it did uh, dry out and it didn't yet. Not this one. So I need to wait just a tiny bit more so i can maybe do the leaves i can do the leaves very nice and let's do different leaves different colors let's do some this time some bright colors Uh, 
Oh yeah, I remember now what I wanted to say. I was going into the park today uh, for my normal walk and then I saw these trees and usually in the summer they have these red leaves. I don't know if you ever saw trees with red leaves but in the summer we have these ones and was uh, I was hope I was thinking like okay it's already almost winter so the leaves should be should have yellowed or you know turn a weird weird shades but it turns out that they're still pretty much red leaves it's just a much deeper red red brown kind of red instead of the other parts so but that doesn't mean that all the leaves should be the same color right i actually would like to have different type of leaves let me see if i add a little bit of this to this Okay, we're gonna make these leaves like this. Pink. Because I like color. <laughs> I like color in my leaves. Why not? It's my Christmas, so I decide what colors they go. Right? I was uh, drawing and I I drew quite some some sweets for this Christmas so I have a list material for the next few live streams which is going to be nice and it's all going to be about sweets and not only sweets I have some let's say human human girls with decorations and stuff because I like that part as well. Okay. <laughs> and these other leaves, they should be... Let's make them. Let's bring in the yellow. Let's bring in that yellow that Adina was saying. Why not? Oh, look at these colors. They work so well together. Ha. I have absolutely no skill in t color theory. I never studied it. And I'm, I'm not a studied artist. I just do things. I wanted to say randomly, but yeah, it feels pretty random. <laughs> I do not uh, necessarily have a cohesive way of doing things or have a plan. So, I didn't go with a plan when I went into this painting. I actually went along with my intuition. So, okay, these are nice. Okay. I um, want to bring some more of these ones into the berries here. So, I don't always come with a perfect plan. But this is the beauty of it. You have a live stream and it could go either way. It could go really bad or it could go really nice. So, yeah, you don't have to have always a plan. Plans are boring, to be honest. I mean, I have so many paints, like I might as well just use them. Like, why wouldn't I use all my paints? To be honest. Hmm? Why would I have to use a limited color palette? Like other people are doing. And limit myself to. 
nah, it needs to be nice and pretty. It's my idea of pretty. Look at these pink ones. They're so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. I am officially liking this painting. Like pink, pink, pink. This is more like a darker pink. <laughs> I'm gonna darken that one a little bit because I want to have the shadows, but not yet. Once I finish this one. And then we're gonna start adding details. You notice that I forgot a leaf here. I've got it. I'm just noticing it now that I have extra leaves that I forgot. Mm. I do add too many things. Okay. So this one I'll make it the same, really nice color, it's more like yellowish neon color, it's really nice. And we're gonna go with really dark green, I'm gonna just drop it in. I added way too much water. Okay, now what will I do? What should I do? I'm going to do some yellow here in the middle. So yellow. And then I'm gonna deepen the colors. You've been with me for an hour now. Usually some of these paintings are not a lot of these paintings, they take time. Yeah, if you make just a card, then that doesn't take that much time because it's way lesser elements. However, let's not kid ourselves that art takes time. If you ever wondered why artists, sometimes you think like, oh, but that's easy to make. It's not about easiness, it's about how much time you put in it, right? Because even if you say, I'm able to draw this or I'm able to do this, the question is, are you also willing to spend the time to actually finalize it? Because these are easy watercolors. I'm not gonna lie, they're not, it's not that complicated. But it does take time. And this is where a lot of people get the wrong idea. And whenever somebody says, oh, but that was, that was easy to make, or why is a, a print uh, cost so much money from you? Because that shouldn't cost me. Well, if you factor in the amount of time you're spending on making such print or illustration or anything, and then you think, how much money are you getting paid per hour? So imagine that you would, you would spend a few hours sketching, a few hours like now. Now this is a tiny one, right? But You'd spend a few hours coloring in, then another few hours just scanning and do color correction. And then the amount of time one spends on doing prints online. These things add up. So of course a print is going to cost money because there's time put in it. And as with everything, time costs money. So. Let's not uh, pretend otherwise. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? 
I want to create the stem. Mm. Let's add the details. Forgot those leaves. But we were talking about fun stuff. We were talking about Christmas and eating and all of that. Um, I was watching with great interest that actually in other countries there's Christmas, although they don't celebrate Christmas as uh, the Christmas because uh, they don't have that concept. Um, Like, let's take Japan, for example. They do celebrate Christmas, but it's more of a, let's say, commercial celebration. And more of a lover's celebration than Christmas. So they eat cake for Christmas. And they give presents, but you give presents to your loved one. Uh... Uh, so they don't celebrate it because of the same reason as we are celebrating it but they do celebrate it and I I saw that maybe other countries are also taking it um, like I don't know if that taints the idea of Christmas for me um, but it's still a nice idea that more people are celebrating it. It doesn't matter that they're not celebrating it for the same reason, I believe. As long as we have a shared holiday that we can all get along and come together. That's always nice, right? Why does it have to be only a religious celebration? Why can't we just celebrate peace on earth and decency and do something good? Like uh, we used to go with a classroom to the old people's folk. Like why not volunteer to go and chat with old people or do things like that? Because, to, truth be told, uh, this is what Christmas should be about, right? Uh, what else? This should be green, this should be green. And then deepen some other greens. Mm, green. The question is, can you even volunteer anymore? No, you can't, because I guess all the old people's folk are closed down because of the virus. So, hmm. I'm sure we could find a way to bring some joy and happiness. be fine I mean can you even send cards there hmm just wondering The 
let's add some more stuff. Texture. Notice that this time I use the black pen and not the purple one because I actually wanted to see the difference between the two. So it's going to be fine. Okay, I think I've added enough, uh, gold, I require gold, so that's my go-to one, uh, is this one from Fine Pick, these are pearlet and watercolors, and then I want it orange, yeah, <laughs> let's see, gold, Oh, this is gonna be nice. I need. Oh, I have something called the pipette. Uh, because this one needs quite some water to activate. So, yeah, let's activate all of them and see what stuff I had. Okay, that was strange sound. I hope you guys didn't hear that one. <laughs> that sound is so weird. Okay. So I'm using a uh, number two. Oh, this is going to be so nice. It's going to add really nice shine. Then I'll decide what I want to do some smoke here. But for now, let's add some shine here. Shine, 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 shine. This is so opaque. It's so nice. These are the best Mika colors, watercolors that they are. Don't know if you guys know about the Mika watercolors, but they're really nice. Okay. And now let's see if I can do this one. Uh, oh no, maybe this one I'll do it with the other color. Yeah. Let's see. This is more of a copper. 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 Don't know if you can actually see that shine. Oh, this is so nice. Okay. Let's see this one. I'm just... I just want it to be sparkly. Line of sparkly in the leaves here. Makes them sparkle. Okay. And some white sparkle in the cookie. You probably won't be able to see it that are watching because the sparkle you don't see on camera that much. It's very rare that we see a sparkle on the camera. Doesn't matter. Let me see.
Nah, we don't need more. And now, let me try to pencil this one in because I'm not sure. You know, my signature move, the the smoke. It's not necessarily even smoke, but I bet you this tart smells awesome. If this was an actual tart in real life, I bet you it will smell awesome. So let's pretend it's the smell. And this is the Claudia signature move, okay? Like, this is how you know it's an original Claudia. Because it has the smoke thingy. This is a really messy one. But that should be fine. Okay, and then we're gonna add some color. And then doo -doo -doo. gonna add it down here as well. And this is where we're going to lighten everything up and we're going to do a totally opposite color than this. It's very close together, theoretically. We're going to go with the yellow that everybody wanted. <laughs> uh, let's see this yellow. I'm going to have some cadmium yellow. Just to brighten everything up because this is cadmium yellow, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Don't let your cats eat the cadmium yellow because it's toxic. So they should not be, you know, doing what the cats do, trying to try out everything on your desk. Be very careful with cadmium yellow. It's a wonderful color, but Pretty toxic. So these are only for us while painting, yeah. And we're going to add some orange. Just to bring everything together. I just dropped it in while it's still wet. It's going to look fantastic. Uh, 
gonna add the last finishing touches. I wanna add some random So, um, this is our awesome painting for today. There's a lot of things going on here. Uh, I like the ball. The colors are bold. What's not to like? It doesn't matter how. It doesn't have to be realistic. Man. It's just like, did I have fun? Yes. Did I have fun making this? Yes. I really like this pink. I really like how the poinsettias here uh, turned out like the depth of color in this one and this one um what's not to like i think i'm gonna take some white pen just to add some more embellishments to be honest i like everything so don't be afraid to experiment i mean What's the worst that can happen? There's nothing worse that can happen because there's no such thing as the worst that can happen. At most, some people will not like it. But did you have fun? Yeah. Okay. Then I would say it's fine. No matter how it turns out, it's fine. Maybe take some lessons, like, from me. I'm usually a perfectionist and I want everything. I used to want everything to be perfect. So I would never have put out um, a video that, in my view, wasn't, like, up to the standards that I wanted. Uh, and that made me spend quite some time... This is better. Quite some time making everything perfect. And then in the end, I wasn't putting any videos out because nothing was perfect. And now I'm more like, I'm having fun. That's enough. Okay. Uh, the pudding looks very real and delicious. The flowers are beautiful and the colors wonderful. Thank you, Marlena. Uh, Thank you so much for joining me. This has been amazing. I really like this pudding. Uh, I think next time it's going to be a cupcake. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> um, and we're going to have maybe some anemones as flowers. That will be looking nice. Uh, for now, this was it. This is the stream. Uh, one and a half hours sharp. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much for the people that are going to watch later on. Um, just to recap, I'm doing this series which is going to be more Christmassy uh, theme and because it's Christmas and because all the things that I associate with Christmas is eating cookies, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, so just a reminder, um, it's going to be fun and join me. Streaming Wednesdays and Sundays. I, I almost thought today was Wednesday. I don't know why I thought today was Wednesday. Okay, just crazy. Um, Wednesdays and Sundays stream and the rest of the days just normal videos that, that I put out. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to close the stream. 
I hope you had a wonderful time and see you guys next time. Doi!